Hi, my name's Paula. I'm 61 and I live in Manchester. I work supporting adults with learning disabilities. I'm also a grandma to a 10 year old. Um, my background is actually in nursing midwifery and I also trained as a homeopath. Um, for my sins, I also worked for a short while for a pharmaceutical company. I didn't last long. I didn't like the ethics. I didn't like the philosophy. I didn't like the lack of morals. So um, that was a very, very short lived affair. Um, I did become very uneasy with the whole situation at the start. I just didn't feel that things were right. Um, I started doing some research. I had to completely change my mindset because um, what I found was, was quite shocking. I had to completely change the way that I had seen the world. And it took a little bit of time to sink in. I just couldn't believe that what I was reading and what I was learning was true. Um, I can remember in the early days, I used to wake up in the mornings thinking this can't possibly be true. This is obviously a, a, just, you know, conspiracy theories, tin ha fat hat, tin foil hat wearers, as they say. And um, I really didn't want to accept it. Um, but the more I, I researched, the more I realized that, yeah, this is, is really happening. Um, and I started trying to tell people who, again, thought I was completely kooky. Uh, few people were on board and had already felt that things weren't right. Um, I hate what's happening to the most vulnerable people in society, the elderly and children. Um, ch the elderly have just been completely ignored and, and, and abandoned, really. I had a friend whose mum died in a nursing home. She had had severe dementia for many years. Um, she was obviously going to die um, imminently, um, but her daughter wasn't allowed to visit her because of the, uh, I can't call it lockdown, it's illegal house arrest as far as I'm concerned. So this poor lady had nobody at the end of her life, um, confused, frightened, alone, abandoned. Um, but the... One of the startling things was when the daughter received the death certificate, it had COVID not tested. So this poor lady hadn't been seen by um, any medics. She had just been uh, in the nursing home with the care staff and the doctor had at death put COVID not tested. So, you know, it's all maybes and assumptions and completely skewed results, which makes me very angry. Um, I uh, continue to, to post um, things about this and, and things that I found and information and, and proper facts and data. And I couldn't believe the amount of people who were coming back, supposedly, supposedly intelligent people who were coming back and saying it was all rubbish and what about the people who died and didn't I have any, any sympathy for those. And, and, and people were not making rational arguments that were being abusive and nasty and I thought this is horrible we're not a compassionate kind society we're no longer listening to each other there's no room for open transparent debate and and, and appreciating that other people will have different viewpoints and people weren't prepared to do any of their own research it was just what the mass media was spouting out must be true um, I did stop watching TV nearly at the beginning um, I cancelled my TV license oh, a few months ago, so um, I'm not having anything to do at all with mass media. I would prefer to go and do my own research from people that I can trust, um, proper informed people who've got an open mind. Uh, I also feel very sorry for the kids. Um, I, I really despair how we are going to have a well-formed, generation of critical thinkers because it's just not going to happen kids are being separated they're being isolated they're being taught that every other human being is a threat and a germ-ridden machine and they've got to keep their distance to be safe um, there's no information about building up your own natural immunity um, and that is, is as regards coming into contact with germs and, and things that will help you to build your immunity plus things like diet and exercise healthy living good lifestyle lack of fear being able to breathe without having a mask across your face having good fresh air having sunshine having exercise all the things that make life good and that help to make a, a healthy physical being 
um, no sharing in schools, um, all the toys and, and, and things that are shared are put away. Um, and I, I understand that there is very little creative creativity in schools, things like art and music, um, things that give joy and pleasure and, and help to, to develop a person as a whole total being, not just as a indoctrinated machine. Um, I've been through various emotions. Sometimes I'm full of despair. Sometimes I'm full of anger. Sometimes I'm full of optimism. Sometimes I just feel completely helpless and don't know what to do. I do feel better now because I do think that there are lots of sites where people are actually coming and speaking out. And I think there are more people now who are, are waking up. Um, especially um, things like you, Anna, you've done a huge amount to kind of bring people together and make people feel less alone. Also, the Keep Britain Free. Um, it seems to be uniting, and that's one thing that is very difficult to do when we're all segregated and isolated and, and kept from gathering. It's very difficult to unite, and I think our, our strength is in unity, definitely. There's also other sites that I do follow, um, most of them on YouTube, but a lot of them tend to get banned, so you find them on BitChute or elsewhere. Things like Carl Vernon, um, he just helps me giggle because he sees things through a... a, a a humorous way, I suppose, which I think you need to keep your sense of humour up. Dr Vernon Coleman, he's got lots of good, sensible, honest advice. Mark Devlin, um, he can get a bit dark, but he's also got um, um, spouts of optimism, which is nice. Um, and, and lots of other people, and I think it's important to have a look at all of these so you don't get bogged down in, in one particular um, way of thought. I've been giving out leaflets to people who will take them, especially into supermarkets. You know, at the checkout, I'll say, oh, here you are, have a look at this. Um, I also, I always stay, try and stay very friendly and smiley and chatty and nice. I'm not being aggressive or forcing my thoughts on people. I just want to, to, to kind of spread the word. Um, I have been given some hope uh, yesterday because um, a group of German doctors have started to speak out. They formed an extra parliamentary inquiry committee and you can find that online and that um, looks really hopeful because they are actually by the looks of it going to hold people to account and that's what we need to do all these people are responsible for damaging people's lives and society and the economy i think need to be held to account and they need to answer for their crimes and their genocide basically Shopping, um, I have never worn a mask. I don't own a mask and I will never wear a mask. The only time I wore a mask was when I was nursing and that was only when I was in theatre. Um, I will not go shopping in a mask. Um, I am really happy because on Monday when I went out maskless to the shop, I only saw two other people who didn't have masks. Tuesday I went to the supermarket and there were about eight or nine people. Today I went to the same supermarket and I saw maybe 20 people without masks and I was really, really pleased. I make a point of smiling at everybody who is maskless. I do smile at people who have got masks, but I can't tell whether or not they're smiling back at me most of the time. But I think it sets things off in their brain about, mm, do I really have to wear this, this thing? Um, we've now been threatened with shutdown now again in, in Manchester because um, infections are going up but it's all out of context, context because you can't say there's a certain number of infections without actually correlating that with the number of deaths and the number of asymptomatic cases, the amount of tests that are being done, it's all relative and if you test more you're going to find more people who are supposedly um, infected but then the, the tests themselves are very dubious aren't they um i think that the reason for the shutdown is because it's eid this weekend and if you look at all the places that have had um uneasing of lockdown i think they called it that's what they've called it they are they do have high muslim populations um and i can see this happening at christmas they'll shut people down they'll do local shutdowns at christmas because it seems to me that they just want to suck the joy out of everything um, and I think we need to say no we're not putting up this we're not having any more the thing that I really really want is for more medics and more healthcare professionals to speak up I know they're frightened of losing their income and their jobs and being struck off I know what the NHS is like I used to be in it 
but I think this is a much bigger thing than your job or your income. I think it's the future of our children, it's the future of our world, and people who are in the know need to speak up now. And if they don't, then there's no turning back. So um, I think I've probably gone off on lots of tangents, I usually do, um, but I hope this um, gets sorted out and we all stand together and are strong enough to say, no, stop it, we're not putting up with this anymore.